A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Ah, do you want to get the very best footage out of your GoPro but still have it easy to shoot and easy to edit? Today I'm going to walk you through my exact day-to-day -day GoPro settings to get the best footage possible. Specifically, I'm going to walk you through the two presets that I use most, that I'm almost always in, and then throw in a few bonuses that I don't know, they're just fun, so I have them on there. And don't worry, today's video is gonna be super simple. We're not trying to, to color grade this footage to a cinema camera. We just want really good footage out of our GoPro that's really easy to shoot and really easy to edit. And, and this is how I do it. Uh, before I jump into what I do, I do wanna kinda mention that GoPro does have some new settings on here for total beginners. If you've never used a GoPro before or you've really never gotten into photography, videography, there's a new setting. All you do is you swipe down from the main screen, swipe over to the right, and there's controls mode. And now in there, there's pro controls and there's easy controls. And the easy controls say preloaded with video, photo, and time-lapse settings that make it easy to point, shoot, and get amazing results. And the results are really good just from those easy modes, but there's a few little tweaks that we can do. And if you follow me to the end of this video, we are gonna get your GoPro set up in a way that it is still really easy to shoot and edit, but but it's better than better than easy mode. The first thing, flip that back to pro mode because we need more options. Okay, so let's just jump into how I have this camera set up. We're, we're going to the beach, we're going out on a picnic. I'm gonna go skateboard with the girls. How do I have my camera set up? Let's jump into the, the main preset that I use and I, I kind of call it my universal preset because this camera is probably 90% of the time in this preset and you'll see why. First thing up is 5.3K at 60 frames a second. Now 5.3K is the largest resolution that this camera can do, but all the videos that I make are in 4K. And that's cool because I can take a 5.3K video and actually, actually zoom a little bit on that video without losing any resolution and put it onto my 4K timeline. Now why am I mostly filming in 60 frames a second on my GoPro? And that's because I can take a 60 frames per second video and I can play that back at real speed on my timeline or I can slow it down to 50 or two times slow motion. So any videos that I'm shooting on my GoPro can be two times slow motion or they can just be played back like normal. And for those of you that are like, well, David, don't you normally shoot in 24 frames a second? Yes, this is in 24 frames a second, but I have all my shutter speed dialed in so that, that we get really natural motion blur that we don't do that on the GoPro day to day. I don't put ND filters on here day to day. I would only put ND filters on here for like a cinema settings. I'm trying to match this to something like this. So I wanna make it 24 frames a second, 150th shutter speed, do all those things that I would do to try to make this footage look as close to this as possible. On the day to day though, I don't do that. I just want my footage to look good and 30 frames a second at a high shutter speed or 60 frames a second at a high shutter speed look they look almost identical. Okay, my lens is set to wide, but we can change that as well. I'll show you how to do that. Hyper smooth is on, jumping down to ProTune, and 10 bit is on and bit rate is high. Now, these are both things that are going to take up more SD card space, more storage on your computer, but for me, uh, for me, that doesn't matter that much. Storage is cheap these days, and I would rather have the highest quality video possible. It's still really easy to edit. The files aren't so big that my computer can't handle them, but really the most important thing is that sometimes I'm filming with my GoPro and I get a shot and I go, oh, oh, I do wanna spend more time on that later, editing it, color grading it, making it look really good. And 10-bit footage is much easier to color grade than 8-bit footage. Shutter, auto. Again, this is, this is just run and gun, shooting fun clips of life. This is not trying to match this camera to a cinema camera. So just let the shutter be auto. EV comp, negative 0.5. This is an important one for GoPro. Because while the GoPro Hero 11 does have significantly better dynamic range than previous models, the GoPro algorithm still tends to over overexpose an image or expose on the brighter side of an image. I wouldn't say it's overexposed, but what you will see is that highlights sometimes become overexposed. And once a highlight goes totally white, um, there's there's no saving it. You're not pulling any information out of that pure whiteness. So the sky goes totally white or someone's wearing a white shirt and that goes totally white or worst case scenario, someone's face goes totally white because it's too bright. There is no recovering that data. There is no data where it's fully bright. But if your image is a little darker and there's some shadows and you wanna bring those up in post, you wanna kinda of raise the exposure, you can do that. It might look a little noisy, but there is still information down there, whereas in the highlights, there's not. So long story short here, protect your highlights, go negative 0.5 on EV comp. White balance, auto, ISO min, ISO max, auto. Sharpness, medium. Now this one is a little debatable. If you know that you're always gonna be editing your footage in post, set that to low and add sharpness in post. Your 
your computer does a much better job of adding sharpness than, than this GoPro does. And also you cannot remove sharpness in post. So if you add sharp, if you had high sharpness on high and you get that like really crispy, very sharpened image and you go, oh, that was too much. I made a mistake in post. You really can't remove it without it looking terrible. What you can do though is set it to low and you can add sharpness in post. I would say medium is okay for most day-to-day -day situations though. I've never really had medium look way too heavy handed. Sometimes a little heavy handed, but not way too heavy handed to where it was distracting to the image. Over to color and I've been using natural on the GoPro. I used to use flat at all times and then that would force me to color grade that footage in post because I've always thought that the GoPro color, which is now called vibrant. I've always thought that's way too punchy. The oranges are too orange. The blues are too blue. The contrast is just like really harsh. But now GoPro added in natural and natural is like it's a really good good color profile. Uh, and that is all the main settings that I have for this camera. That is kind of my universal preset. But there's one there's one very important thing to do on this preset that really brings us together and makes it so that I can just use this every single day. Before I tell you what that is, let me tell you guys about the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Because Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a website, run a blog, start an online store, anything you want to do on the internet, you can basically build it through Squarespace. I've been a professional photographer for 14 years and for nine of those, I've trusted Squarespace as my business's website. They've been my key to booking clients over and over again throughout the years. If you have a business or side project that you're trying to take to the next level, Squarespace is the way to do that. Because not only is it super simple to set up a website with their drag and drop process, but it's also really easy to go in there and make changes later so you can keep your website up to date at all times. No coding involved at all, no having to reach out to a web designer and, and wait for them to make a little change. You can just go in there and do it totally yourself. Click the first link in the description, shoot over to squarespace.com for a totally free trial. When you're ready to go live, use code Manning for 10% off at checkout. Okay, back into these settings and, and the most important part that makes this kind of a universal preset. Scroll all the way to the bottom there and you're gonna see shortcuts. And I'm gonna show you how I have these shortcuts set up. These are on-screen shortcuts. So I have four slots here and those four things are kind of quick settings adjustments right there on the screen. In the lower left, I have lens where I can just tap in and I can just switch lenses straight from here. I don't have to have a whole nother preset set up to jump too quickly. I can just tap in there and switch the lens. In the lower right there, I have EV comp because there's gonna be times where maybe my subject's backlit. There's gonna be times when I wanna change my EV comp. I wanna change what the camera sees. Maybe the scene is like way too bright and I can look at the camera and go, whoa, it's exposing super bright. And I can drag that down to negative one or negative 1.5, or maybe something's backlit and I can see that my subject is really dark on the screen. I just tap that and I drag it up add a stop or two of exposure and all of a sudden my subject looks great. Basically the EV comp is brighter and darker and you can have that control right there on the screen, super easy to jump to. In the upper left there I have slow-mo so I can tap into that and right now I'm at 60 frames a second. If I tap number one, that drops me down to 30 frames a second and then if I go all the way down, I jump to 24 frames a second. Again, 24 frames a second you're probably only gonna be using on here if you're running ND filters, you're setting the shutter speed manually to try to match it to a cinema camera. We're not doing that today. So we're only really using 30 frames a second and 60 frames a second. Again, I almost always shoot at 60. And if for a long time, I know I'm going to film something and it's for sure not going to get slowed down. I'll drop down to 30. It'll keep my camera cooler and use up less SD card space. And then upper right, I have color and I usually jump between natural and flat color. Now flat color, I'm only going to use if I know I'm going to edit this footage. If I'm filming something and I go, well, this is part of a video. I'm going to be color grading footage anyways. Might as well shoot it flat, get the most dynamic range out of it, really have the most control over that coloring and contrast. But for day to day, for almost everything else, um, natural is the way to go. Okay, those are the settings. That's the, the kind of universal setup that I have. But for the last month, I've really been playing with that eight by seven aspect ratio. And to do that, we're gonna set up an eight by seven frame at 4K 60. My on screen controls are the same, everything else is the same, but eight by seven mode gives me that ability to shoot something and say, hey, I wanna cut this for, for Instagram or for Reels or for TikTok, or I wanna take that same video and I wanna cut it for horizontal so that I can put it in a video like this, or I can just edit it for my own keepsake. I prefer horizontal video. And then down from there, I have a 4K 60 mode that has the Horizon 360 lock on it so that I can start my camera and I can turn my camera a full 360, but the image stays upright at all times. So if I was if I was to do something like rah, rah, maybe a motorcycle, something like that, the image would not look like 
this, the image would be perfectly straight up and down, even though the camera was was going crazy. And that's a fun mode to have. Then jumping down from that, I've got a 4K 120 activity mode. So for really slow motion stuff, I jumped to 4K 120. And then same thing down from that is 2.7K 240 frames a second. I almost never use 240 frames a second unless something is moving super fast. 120. 120 is already very slow. And these are all my actual presets. Again, like I said, the first two, I'm pretty much always in. I'm going 5.3K, 60 frames a second, almost at all times with all those settings dialed in. And then I think, oh, I might wanna put this on Instagram. I jump down to that eight by seven mode and the other ones, the other modes, they're, I don't know. They're fun to have on there. I don't use them very often. Oh, also, if you don't know this, and this is always something that people learn, this is the power slash mode button and this is the shutter button. We're gonna tap this one quickly and then tap this shutter, tap, tap. Now I can cycle through with the mode button and get to those different presets that we just talked about. And then when I'm ready to find one, I just hit the shutter button. So if you're in a pool or something like that, you're out snorkeling, you wanna be able to still cycle between those settings. That's a way to do it without ever touching the touch screen. It's a tip that I keep putting in videos and people keep commenting like, oh, I didn't know that one. Apparently you didn't watch my last video when I also mentioned it. <laughs> if you guys wanna know more about this camera, uh, click up there, go watch the full video on this camera on the GoPro Hero 11. If you guys wanna see a video on how to take your GoPro with these settings out into the world, some tips for actually shooting with a GoPro, uh, hit the thumbs up button, comment below, let me know, and I will make that video for uh, for you guys. I hope this helped you guys. I hope uh, you can get your GoPro dialed in just like this, just set it up like this, and you're gonna you're gonna get some really good footage. All right, I'll see you guys soon. I feel like GoPro should let me export these presets as like a file that you could then take and just and just put on your I think there is something with the shot lab thing or the QR codes. I think there's QR codes that I could set up where you can just point your camera at it and it scans. I have never really gotten into all that stuff with the GoPros. I just shoot them like this almost all the time. Like I said, if you guys know how to do all that QR code stuff though, let me know down in the comments. Thanks. I gotta do a new studio tour soon. I think those lights are new. That light, I don't think I've talked about. Even this light is new. Oh, and this mat, the mat is for sure new. You guys haven't seen the mat till recently. Uh, it's white on one side and blue on the other. You never know what you're gonna get. <laughs>